Welcome to Rickenbackers Are Weird, episode 738. Uh, those who love Rickenbackers love them for some of the same weirdnesses that those who hate them hate them for. And uh, I'll address some of that stuff in a little bit. The main focus of this video, because I didn't see anything out there that really answered this when I was trying to explain this option to the owner of this Rickenbacker, is uh, before, uh, I'm not sure what the date is, I've seen conflicting reports. Most people agree sometime in the mid 80s, Rickenbacker changed how their guitars were fundamentally wired. And this applies to the, to the basses as well as the guitars. Um, on the, we're gonna focus on the guitars. Um, from the beginning through, let's say 85, 86, somewhere in the mid 80s, uh, the bridge pickup signal wire from the pickup itself had a point 0047 microfarad cap. That's a 4.7 nanofarad cap or 4,700 picofarad cap uh, bet between the cap, between, sorry, between the pickup and the volume for that pickup. So there is always that, I'm gonna call it a 4.7 nanofarad. It's the fastest way to say it. So that 4.7 nano is always in series between the pickup and the volume pot on the treble pickup, the bridge pickup. After 83, they remove that. Now this is a 36012V64, uh, which is supposed to be just like George Harrison's that he used on A Hard Day's Night. In stock form, it was not. I'll get into some of the other changes I made on this guitar in a little bit. But first, let's just do a comparison between having that capacitor in the circuit and out of the circuit so that the owner of this guitar can choose how he wants it to be wired. Uh, it can be done with a push-pull, but I know the owner of this guitar, he doesn't want to mess with a push-pull. He's going to want it one way or the other. So this way we get to hear what the old wiring with that cap sounded like and what the new wiring without that cap sounded like. Now, all those old records, the Birds, the Beatles, REM, uh, you, know, you name your Rickenbacker people, Tom Petty, uh, Mike Campbell, those were done with... 70, 60s and 70s uh, Rickenbackers for the most part, and those all had the cap. When you first hear the cap by itself on the bridge pickup, you may think, why on earth would anyone want that? But let's just demonstrate that first. So here I have the bridge pickup selected, um, tone and volume all the way up, uh, and I've got the cap bypass. So post 80s wiring, modern wiring. Here's that bridge. Let's add that cap. So you'll hear quite a few things happening there. The overall volume drops a little bit and it loses a lot of low end. The high pass is, is around 225 hertz. There's also a phase thing that's happening there. And uh, while you don't really hear uh, absolute phase with just a, a change when you're hearing the pickup by itself, the way it works in conjunction with the middle pickup is very audibly different. But by itself, you may think that sounds horrible to have the vintage stuff. But that's what you hear on a lot of those records. Versus the modern. I have seen in various guitar forums over the years people saying, how do I get my Rick to have that sound because I can't bring out enough of the octave, I'm hearing more fundamental. And that's a great example right here. With the modern bridge wiring, you're hearing a lot of that fundamental and less of the octave. You bring in this cap, which has that filtering of, of the lower frequencies and you get So you can think of it that way as just kind of equaling out the, the larger string and the octave string. Now, if you're listening to this so far, 
and you think, I don't care what that was originally. That sounds weird to me. I like the modern. That's fine. You go with whatever you float your boat. I don't have a dog in this in this fight. But uh, if you're looking for the vintage sounds, let me stick to the modern here and go to the middle. And I've got the blend uh, so that the neck pickup is up just a little bit more than 50%. So I'll blend, I'll blend it in from no neck. to about 50% neck. So the difference is a little bit subtle. But it can be exaggerated based on the blend settings. So if I blend in a little less of the neck. You can hear that notch, that wah kind of happen. And that's something that uh, amps react to uh, changes the resonant peak of the whole thing. A little bit of gain on the amp, modern. That shows some of the neck uh, middle blends. And the neck's unaffected either way. It doesn't matter whether it's modern or vintage, the neck's gonna sound the same if the blend is up. So we covered bridge and middle blended. Let's see what the bridge pickup sounds like by itself, if there's any use for that vintage sound, which it's kind of weird to our ears. I can think of one part that that uh, used that. Let's see if I can play it on this narrow neck. Sounds pretty good. Let's go to the vintage. I think that might have been the blend, just barely blended. Versus modern. And again, there's not a right or wrong. It's whether you like the sound of the pre-80s, the vintage, or the modern. Uh, if you're doing a lot of bridge by itself, you may want the modern, and you can always have that installed on a push-pull pot. So, maybe this helps someone hear the difference make a choice. I personally prefer the vintage, but I think I would have a push-pull pot on the blend for that. Uh, so that's the sound of the pickups. Let me uh, mute the amp, because this guitar, the way its uh, ricks are wired, it never really mutes the output, even with the volumes off. So there's always a little bit of a buzz. Yeah, definitely something where you want to use a tuner pedal or a volume pedal if you gig with one. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so this came in to me, supposedly, uh, a 1964 reissue. And uh, had a couple problems. Some of the owners um, 
well meant but bad ideas and some from the factory. From the factory, it had 330k pots all around, which made this whole guitar sound really dead. Uh, it now has 250k volumes, but 500k tone and 500k blend. That makes a big difference. Um, uh, I shielded it a little bit. There's only so much you can do with a hollow body. I had the six saddle bridge on a 12 string, which meant that you could never get anywhere close to intonated, and it sounded pretty bad. It sounded especially bad, sorry, especially bad with a set of nine through 38, 12 strings it had on there with an unwound G. And he had it tuned uh, a whole step down, so it was D to D, because he'd read that Rick necks can't handle uh, the full tension. And that might have been true of some very old ones, but the modern ones, um, there's no problem tuning this standard. So now it has 10 through 42 uh, uh, pyramid gold flat wounds with a wound G, and it's tuned E to E, standard. Um, and that increased tension, uh, and I tweaked the dress rod, has almost no relief at all. Very low action, which is how these should be set up. They have tiny little frets. Um, the wound G is what the nut slot was cut for. If you go to an unwound G, you really need to have a new nut put on. This guitar needs some nut work because some of the, the nut slots are too high, and I don't have the tools to, to work at such little fine adjustments. Uh, this guitar plays a little bit sharp in the first three frets, regardless that, of the fact that the guitar itself is now intonated properly. So I can play a major seventh, or this one, or a 13, and the guitar is in tune with itself up here. The issue is down here, the first three, four frets, because the nut slots are a little bit high, it wants to go a little bit sharp. So what I advise the owner to do is tune the, the, uh, the, the unison strings, the B and the E, at the third fret, tune all the other four strings, the low string in each pair at the third fret, and tune the octave in the lower four strings to the open string. And that's what you just heard. That gives kind of a stretched tuning, where uh, the open string uh, fundamental is a little bit flat. The uh, harmonic, the octave of that, that string is actually in tune at the open note. And then as you play a, say a C here, they're in tune because this is in tune at C. It's a, the best compromise I can get unless this guitar gets a new nut. So it's got flat wound strings like the originals had. That's what you hear in all the Birds and Beatles recordings. That's what REM uses. I'm not sure about Mike Campbell. It has a 12 string bridge from Rickenbacker, intonated properly, uh, that's now level with the body. It was tilted forward really badly and vibrated and buzzed. Um, I had to replace the neoprene rings holding the pickups on because the old ones had uh, uh, deteriorated and they had damaged the, the varnish, which is something ricks are prone to. And they uh, they were, you could not adjust the pickups any higher because uh, there was no uh, pressure from those O-rings. So with the new rings installed, the bridge pickup can be higher and you can get a really nice blend or balance between the two. Uh, so I, I didn't do modern improve wiring on this rick like I did on that uh, 350 or 355 I did about six months ago. But this is the traditional 1964 wiring with the correct pots, which has that cap in question. Though once the owner sees this video, I can either leave it in place or I can remove, uh, jumper it out. Uh, this switch is just temporary, at which point the pit guard gets all the way attached. So I've just been very careful with it right now. But it's a lot of fun to play. The neck is so freaking narrow. And the string spacing, I did as well as I could here at the bridge to get uh, consistency and nice separation. I'm not having much problem with the right hand, but my left hand just, I would need six weeks of playing this guitar and this guitar almost exclusively to get good at it. And I am certainly not there. But I love the sounds. <laughs>
so much of what I love is on here.